Monday, March 31st, 2014. School board meeting to order. Uh, the first item on the agenda is the approval of the agenda. And I would make a motion at this time to move item B, nomination and appointment of board vice president, to uh, the next item of business uh, ahead of number 9B. Second. It's been moved uh, and seconded to uh, move item B to uh, follow item two on the agenda. Is there any uh, discussion on that? Seeing none, I'll call for the vote. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Motion carries 6-0. And so now we need to approve the agenda with that uh, change. Is there any other changes or discussion on the agenda? I would call for a, a vote approving the agenda. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Motion carries 6-0. Next item on the agenda is nomination and appointment of the board vice president. And this is a position to be filled by uh, that Darren Shoemaker held prior to his resignation. And at this time, I would nominate uh, James Liker to serve as the board vice president. And this is a not, it does not need a second. Okay. It, it would just be if there's any other nominations, we would hear those now and then uh, any discussion and then vote. Are there any other nominations? Any discussion? Call for the vote then. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Motion carries 6-0. Item three on the agenda is audience participation. This is the first and only opportunity for members of the audience to board on any matters. Is there anybody in the audience that wishes to address the board? So now we'll move on to report of committees. Superintendent Cap. We do not have any reports this evening. Item five is communications from other organizations. There is an attached report from the Hayes Rec Commission, their minutes and uh, other information, and also from the Early Hit Start program. Any questions or discussion on those items? Move to item six, report of superintendent. I want to congratulate a few people here. First is the uh, Hayes High Broadcasting and Media Team, and um, they're here every every time we have a board meeting. But they were uh, honored as being one of the top video producing high schools in the state. They had 12 award winning categories and have done an excellent job. And want to congratulate all of those folks. <coughs> and we also have an award winning uh, journalism. Uh, program. We had 17 students qualify for state in journalism and uh, that encompassed 25 different areas. State competition is May 3rd in Lawrence and then we also had the Hayes High Science and Engineering uh, Fair and uh, had students qualify, six students qual or eight students qualify uh, but two of those could can't go, but we'll have six, six students um, <coughs> going to the state science fair. So uh, uh, another good month. For Very good. Yeah, that is all I have to report. Item seven is the financial report. Tracy? Um, first, the IT department will be installing um, Alio Intelligence, I believe, on Thursday. And then we hope to do our training within the next couple of weeks. So I'm hopeful by either the next meeting or the retreat, we'll have some good information um, to show you guys about Alley Intelligence and what it can do. And so we can start moving forward with that. And the first handout um, I gave you has the single blue line on it. This is our capital outlay budget showing um, what our cash balance was last year and our revenue. So total of almost 3.3 million um, we will have have total in that account. And then we kind of broke it down with our leases so you can see how many more payments we have on those or if it's already been paid. <coughs> and the next page is just show some additional breakdown of maintenance, which includes the salaries that we can use out of capital outlay, um, our architecture services, transportation. 
And I also listed at the very, on the third page, the schools, what we had scheduled and what was unscheduled. We had 133,000 in unscheduled um, expenses out of capital outlay that were not planned for. So the yellow line shows our estimated balance of 828,000. And that is not considering any emergency reserve. So, you know, if we have any additional expenses that come up that were not planned for, that would come off of that 828,000. And at the very bottom, I listed the additional infrastructure needs that um, were kind of on that wish list that, the, that was provided at the beginning, I believe, of the year of additional things that um, we'd like to see happen or that are needed. Um, like 190,000 was budgeted for network upgrades, um, some replacement of doors, 7,000. So just kind of a list there. So you can see out of that 828,000 <coughs> we have left, um, 353,000 could still be spent on those needs if, if you guys would decide to do that or if the need would arise. Since I know this is new material, um, you know, if you come across any questions that I could answer at the next work session, I'd be more than glad to. But does anybody have any questions now on the capital outlay budget? I just want to bring their attention to a, a couple things on the lease. Um, Leases in progress, we have two of those that are up this year. The, the big one, computer equipment lease of $414,000. Um, this is the last year payment of that. And then also the, uh, I think the coach bus. coach bus, that was the last payment on that. It's a total of $475,751 that um, we will not be expending out of capital outlay for those things. Um, we do need to work on our technology plan and probably start again with those, uh, with that information um, or see what direction we want to go and then come up with a lease and do a lease purchase again like this is. So that's going to be a reoccurring cost sometime when we make that decision. Um, and then just the other thing, uh, we, uh, the technology that we had been talking about, there was $190,000 in network upgrades that's still listed on here for infrastructure needs. Uh, most of the other things we just have put on hold. Uh, I know the lecture hall seating we had started at the beginning of the year, going to go forward with that, that $105,000, and then pulled that back. And we'll wait uh, for a, a later time. So that's. I guess uh, report that Tracy put together, but I just wanted to draw your attention to those couple items there. Thank you. I, I was looking at this, I couldn't figure out what we were paying Beach Schmidt for, but then I realized that's what we're leasing for, I think, some of the concerts, is that right? Or was that middle school graduation? That would be for Hayes High concerts. Okay. It, it, and then Lewis Field, obviously, is for football games, but Gross Memorial's not on there, and I know we pay. Uh, $10,000 a year, I think, is the cost for graduation. And it it probably is not a capital outlay, but Marty, you were shaking your head. But, uh. I, I think the amount is closer to 2500 Greg. Um, we do have a contract on that. I think, I think that's the daily rate. And we have it Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. But I, I could be wrong. Well, hopefully I am. But I think it was, historically, it's been 10 But anyway, I just want to make sure we got that added in. <coughs> Yeah, it I, is. I believe that is, does come out of general fund. Oh, it does? Capital, okay. Mm -hmm, for graduation. I, I just have one, uh, just because I don't know, this is my first uh, go at this, is the Lewis Field rental, is that 18000 Is that about, I mean, and I didn't have time to double check that today, I, but. I, I uh, think we paid 2400 a game, and we had four games, and. And if and you go, this time, I think, is, I is what, that all included? There's a summer camp, too. But it just seemed high, but maybe it isn't. I, yeah, I well, thought it was just right at 9 or 10 yeah. when we looked at it. But I think if you playoffs, don't, yeah, I don't think we have to pay extra for those. Historically is what that's been. Yeah, maybe that's what it is. We'll, we'll double check that before we make next year's budget. With that. And then on the... Um, Architectural services, mm -hmm. <clears throat> that remaining budgeted amount. 
so we've, we've underspent on our budget, if I read that right. We've still got 37372 So we had 137000 budgeted for architectural. We had a total of 100000 budgeted and 37372 we have not spent. Okay. So. Maybe if we are paying the Coliseum for uh, out of general, maybe it should go out of here. Yeah, better we'll, to get we'll, back we'll, over we'll there. We'll check that and see. And and I don't know. Maybe that Lewis Field rental is part of that. I, I don't know. We'll find out. We'll yeah. talk to Fort Hayes about all of that and anyway and see where we are. So. The Lewis Field rental is twenty four hundred dollars per game. Twenty-four hundred per game. Total. Total. Yes. That's a good deal. Yeah, that is. <coughs> Um, the next thing we want to talk about was we did meet with the auditor today after um, she completed her, her full audit. And um, unfortunately, we don't have any good news to report. Um, there were a few slight changes in our FTEs for um, ESOL, the at-risk, um, and our virtual enrollment. But the main two, we were um, a total of 17.6 FTE less than what we had counted our, our count on September 20th. 6.6 .6 of those students were um, reduced from new facility waiting and 10.4 from transportation for the students over two and a half miles. So the 17.6 is um, equivalent to around 80,000 that we will not receive in funding from for the general fund and into our LOB supplemental general. Uh, one one uh, caveat there too, when they do special ed, and I don't know, Mark, when is June? Uh, Probably. Right yeah, we will know. We won't know how many students there are in that category till they do that audit. Uh, so we won't know that number right now. We have four or seven hundred and. 46 that will be lower I know but uh, they'll they'll do that at a later time Yeah, we are um, still looking into the new facility waiting to try to figure out how they how the original numbers were calculated and to make sure that we did not miss anything in the information we provided to the auditor and she said you know if we can get her any updated information in the next couple of days then we wouldn't have to actually appeal it so she would take a look at that so we are going to look into that tomorrow to see if there's any additional changes there. Did you want to talk about the spreadsheet at all being there? No, I think okay. I mean that's all. Okay. And then the last item um, I had was this form for um, fiscal year 15 for next year showing a breakdown of the cuts or the, the amount that we're going to need that we're going to be short next year that 1.3 million we've been talking about and then some different reduction ideas um, the ones in red including staffing increasing the enrollment fee and charging a transportation for students within two and a half miles you know would be up to your guys's um, discretion and vote so just kind of a breakdown of our most current um, suggestions. And I think you guys will talk about the, and the other ones later. Yes, and this, I mean, you can see the budget increases and that 63300 with the $14 increase is uh, contingent on the budget the legislators pass. And there's a lot of information right now um, out there uh, Tomorrow there's a conference call again with Topeka about uh, the Senate plan and the House bill. And most of those have some pretty major reductions in the waiting um, all across the board. But then 
some things, and I'll talk about it a little bit later here when we get to the local option budget, opportunities to increase that, to offset some of it. So there's a lot of work that needs to be done on this. We are making the assumption that in everything I've heard, the $14 would still be in there, but we're far from out of the word out of the woods even with the 1.3 million that we keep talking about um, it just gonna be next Friday they have to have some decisions made so maybe we'll know more by then but I'll talk a little bit more about it later in the meeting and that was all I had right now thanks Tracy Dean, on the, the uh, that budget reduction numbers, uh -huh. do we when do we anticipate we'll talk it more in depth on that? I know we're going to talk about some of those things today. I'm sorry, what? I didn't hear you, Greg. I, I know we're going to talk about some of those budget reduction items today, but uh, do you anticipate when we'll address or we'll have addressed all of them? Um, we will talk about the two increases for enrollment tonight or for I'm sorry enrollment fee or or uh, actually the workbook and consumable fee and then transportation we'll talk about that this evening and we don't we can table those if we have some idea what direction I mean we're planning on that as far as staff goes um, we will have a pretty good idea we will go to executive session again and talk about some of those things and uh, definitely start letting staff know hopefully by the end of this week and then we'll have to do resolutions and those things at a later uh, at the next meeting but uh, so, yeah, getting getting closer but uh, that's kind of the timeline right now any further questions or discussion on uh, the superintendent or I mean the financial report I'm sorry item 8 is the consent agenda which consists of the board meeting minutes from March 10, 2014, the work session minutes from March 24, 2014, the financial reports, the expenditure summary report, building budget reports, February investment report, personnel transactions, and the approval of bills in the amount of $503,291.91. Do we have a motion to approve the consent agenda? So moved. Second. It's been moved by board member Waddell, second by board member Liker to approve the consent agenda. Is there any discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Motion carries 6-0. Item 9A is acceptance of resignation and resolution to post the uh, board vacancy. And I think the uh, resolution has been circulated and uh, I guess at this point I'll make a motion to uh, adopt the resolution uh, declaring a board vacancy and uh, I would move that we uh, provide that whereas a vacancy exists in the membership of the Board of Unified School District number 489 Ellis County, Kansas and whereas KSA 25-2022 authorizes the Board of Education to fill such a vacancy no sooner than 15 days following publication of notice in a newspaper having general circulation in the school district, be it resolved that the clerk of the Board of Education of USD 49, Ellis County, Kansas, shall cause such a notice to be published in the Hayes Daily newspaper, or Hayes Daily News newspaper, uh, and then approved by uh, all board members. Do we have a second? Second. It's been moved by myself, seconded by board member Bickle. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, I'll call for the vote. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Motion carries 6-0. Item 9C is the insurance planning presentation, and I believe we have Larry Casper here to address the board. Come on up. Unfortunately, it's not been that good. We 
fits so far, and then I uh, fit 17 claims for a total of $165,000. If you add that in to the uh, five year prior, we have 88.37 loss ratio, which is 60% breaking. So, we, I'm sorry, 88. And the break even is 60? 60 break even. You take her 40% for expenses and 60% for claims. Uh, unfortunately, the claims continue to be primarily spent in all of us. We have to have a safety program and hold everybody accountable to it, or we'll continue down the road we've been going down, and you can't can't continue it. Can't afford to. How much? 60 or 16? What's that? Price. Well, not the price, but just, I mean, moving forward, I know last year we got to pass July 1, and, and that wasn't good for you guys, and I don't think we want to get back in that position again, but I just, when, <coughs> when's the, I mean, obviously, by, no later than July 1, but for you guys in particular, when's, ideally, when would you have an answer, or one an answer from us? Report this guy goes back. It, and is he with insurance planning? Yeah. And he's your. Go ahead. Okay. Yeah, I did the same thing in lots of schools. In fact, last December I did a walkthrough of all the schools. And um, and really I looked at the work comp issues. And like you said, <coughs> it flipped tricks and falls all the way. But when I was looking through the schools, we didn't see the issues there. So it's a, it, it, it's a safety committee, an awareness issue. And that's something that. Um, helped you uh, within other um, corporations, other schools, to put together a safety committee. And sure enough, I, I think that's one route to go, but it, it's an awareness issue more than it is. And it's got to be continued. What, what we're seeing here is 
slip trips and falls are typical of schools, but at the same time not at this degree. Is is it uh, in any one department or is it spread out between teachers, custodians, it's, administration? It's, it's spread out. I, and, I, and I'll tell you, you know, usually a lot of times you'll see it more so in kitchen and custodial, but it's spread out. Are these mostly happening inside the schools, or are they outside the building? More inside. <coughs> and most, most of them happen inside. Like stairs, or I mean, how specific can you get? There was one in the kitchen, and, and typical, like I said, that's where you see stuff, because you have slippery surfaces. But, but it's, it's all over, it's not just one area. And, um, and like I said, that's, that's, that's pretty typical of schools. But, but when, I, when I talk to our maintenance department even, they have a plan coming into the building when, on uh, adverse weather days and things like that. That's why I feel, you know, it's not so much that it's always slippery surfaces, it, it's other things too, tradition and such. And, and what's our work comp number now? Are we at 1.1? Three. It actually went down to 1.24. 1.24 is where we're at now? No, you're at 1.29. It's going to 1.24. Okay. The state of the rate increase. And we have a five year clock. Five year clock before some of that stuff starts falling off from last year. Three year, three three year clock. Three year. Okay. All right. I will be attending that meeting. Yeah, Tracy and I will. And typically on this on this safety committee out of each building, you nominate somebody out of each building to be on that committee? Beyond well, the school is usually appointed. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Do you guys have like a written plan or something that... <clears throat> not here, but I can say Well, I'm just curious if, I mean, if you have a recommendation for us, because I... I mean, I, at least from my perspective, I suspect the rest of the board's there too, that we're willing to do whatever it takes to eliminate this issue. I mean, we're just, this is just wasted money at this point. I mean, it's only 16000 this year, but it was 94, 95 last year, I think. And, you know, that's well over $100,000 that we're paying for nothing. It was 160000 So. It couldn't be more than $16,000. Well, Right, it, but at, at least 16, so uh, hopefully you can help us out and have it no more than that, but yeah, I mean, it's, do you have, what, I mean, do you have any idea what the high end could be? But you think no matter what happens, we're going to have an increase this year? Well, I mean, they tell the board company to get this guy. He'll be your serious about safety. I mean, no good policy of safety. I mean, we can talk to him and they give him something lower. Okay. So you're saying the sooner we get this committee together, the better off we are in their eyes then? The sooner we start doing anything. Right. Yeah, the better off we are. I think Tracy also did get a question about uh, brokers and agents. I can probably best lead that portion of the discussion. I had, I had talked with uh, Rich Kramer about last year, about well, a little later than this, but one of the, the discussions we had was exploring the idea of going a broker route versus an agent route, and he indicated that there might be some willingness or desire on your guys' part to explore that as well. And as I think, are we in, we have one more year left on the current agreement? And I guess my question would be on that is if we wanted to look at that direction, is it something you guys would look at doing now or waiting until the end of the year? I think the perception is that brokers charge fees and agents charge commission, but in reality, agents can charge fees and vice versa. So, we 
can almost look at a broker like a wholesaler and an agent like a retailer, but um, brokers can contract with companies they don't represent. An agent is contracting with the client. <coughs> Very simple. One of the differences, I, I at least that, that I thought was out there, is that you know if you guys, if you're our agent, if you go secure four or five quotes, we'll get whichever one you guys determine to be the best one. If you're our broker, we get to see them all, and and then you get to explain to us which one's the best one. At least we get to see everything and and be able to ask the questions. Is that accurate? You know which way? I mean, which way is uh, would we be in better shape, or do you think we would be? The question for me would be is uh, if, if your position is you, you, you're not interested in, in looking at it from a broker standpoint, we're probably a year away from looking at that. If you are, then we probably need to start putting something together and looking at it from that direction. And we're talking not just uh, work comp, we would be, t I mean, you're talking right. property and casualty and everything. I'm going to ask you a, a question that was asked to me that I had no clue on how to answer. Um, I was asked about a state work comp program and whether or not you guys are able to provide that or not. And can, do you know what I'm talking about? Well, are you talking about the pool, or are you talking about the assigned risk? Assigned risk is a forced pool, where it requires that work to come up, nobody wants you. Uh, assigned risk is set up where one, one of two companies have to take you as assigned risk, and that's not a good option. And you bring in over 200,000 automatically goes into a retro, means based on claims. Not picking up the pool through the school board's education. I don't know if that's what you're talking about. Well, the first. Okay. But you're able to, you're able to secure quotes on that, or that was separate from what you guys do. Those are the questions asked to me, and thanks for answering them. You couldn't look at the doctor bowl, so I don't know that you haven't done it. Hockey worker, you're unknown cause. You don't know what you're going to have 20 things. You know, that's not the doctor's like 20,000 dollars. You expect Well, Would you anticipate the savings to be similar to that? Or more? Or? Well, it may be worth it for us to look at that, at least for the short term. 
and maybe your mark based on historic numbers. So when we when we get the quotes on that, we can get uh, have it look at it from that perspective as well, so we can. And how many of our claims are under five thousand dollars on our slips and falls? Two over. So out of seventeen claims, right? Two are over five thousand dollars. So if we were self-insured up to five thousand dollars, we'd only have two claims on our on modifier. Fifteen times five, or what? Well, some of them I assume is just one visit to the hospital. So we would be ahead on these claims. Now, if we had a catastrophic claim, it'd be over the five thousand. But we're only in, on the hook up to five thousand, correct? No. Thousand dollars per claim. But this year that would have been seventeen thousand. So far. No, not really, because some of them are less than the thousand. Yeah, but, but but maximum. Yeah. I mean, if we if their the doctors visit at one hundred and fifty dollars, you're <coughs> that much ahead. First year was 30 claims. And, and, and you think this is an education problem with our, our employees that to file a work comp claim for $150? I mean, at what point do you say, maybe we ought to think about this overnight? That's, that's not for you to answer, is it? That is up for the administration to answer. Both slips and falls or one slip and fall? Both are slip and fall big claims. Over 50,000? Okay. That's all I have for you guys. I don't know about the rest of them. Anybody else? Do have any questions? Well, thanks for coming out and hopefully your meeting next week goes well. It's, uh, or, this, this, no, it's this week? Yeah. Oh, I mean this week. This week. Yep. I hope it goes well too. <laughs> Thank Thanks you. for coming guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks guys. Okay, the next item on the agenda is authorization uh, before the board president to sign the federal Head Start grant. Dean, do we have anything on uh, that? Donna, other? did you have anything you want to, you might just give a brief overview. Yeah. <clears throat> Early Head Start, Head Start slots, and that funds 163 children and families. Um, not much has changed in here except that they did restore the sequestration funds, and so um, we did increase our numbers back up to what they were before the cuts. So um, we um, added an additional nine children. Are there any questions? Thank you for everything you do. Thank yes, thank you. you. I do make a motion to uh, uh, for authorization of the board president to sign the federal Head Start grant. That second. It's been moved by board member Bickel, second by board member Locker to approve the signing of the federal Head Start grant. Is there any discussion? Call for the vote. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Motion carries 6-0. Item E is the, the approval of the revised school calendar. Yes, this is uh, moving the snow days up to the beginning of the year and 
uh, then there's no question of whether we've already made them up or not. Um, Hayes has always done it this way, and I had uh, moved them back farther in the, a different part of the year. So um, this just changed those to August, the two August dates for snow makeup days. Um, one thing that just kind of has to do with calendar and, and those things, with the, when the auditor came today, um, there was several buildings that just barely made <coughs> I mean, they were down to 1116 hours to the minute. And her suggestion or her thoughts, we really need to take a look at that and try to maybe have a little cushion because if we don't, then obviously there's a violation for not meeting the minimum number of, of, uh, eight, of uh, hours, not minutes, hours in the school year. So uh, we'll have that conversation come up later but this what this does is pretty much the bare minimum again as far as the number of days you could gain by the length of lunch period the uh, length of the day those types of things but we'll discuss those at a later date but uh, recommendation is to go ahead and approve this with the date snow makeup days in August do we have a motion to approve the revised school calendar so moved do we have a second? Second. It's been moved by board member Liker, second by board member Lang to approve the revised school calendar. Is there any discussion? Dean, you said so we just clear it this year? Yes. What happens if we fall? I don't, what, what would cause us to fall under it? Well, if something happens in a, uh, oh, last year, year it was a uh, gas leak I believe maybe at Roosevelt to where they didn't have school and uh, missed more than what the other schools did so their time was very limited they she probably really gave us some breaks this year when you look at lunch schedules how some of those things are recorded in the documents that she looked at so we'll have that conversation with principals and then uh, to bring that up to probably labor, labor management and see where we actually are because uh, we don't want to be under. That's right. a negotiated item with teachers then? Yes. On how many the, teaching days? The days, but the length of the day, and I, I, without having it in front of me, Marty, I don't know. We'd have to talk about that, but adding a few minutes uh, to each day or something. Just to, The high school has the most hours. They have a longer day, and they were over by quite a few. Uh, but the rest of the rest of the buildings, I think middle school was was the next one, and then I think almost all the elementaries were just right down to the, the hour. Okay. So, but her suggestion, we really need to look at that and try to build a little cushion there. So we will do that. Is it a monetary penalty, or did she say? What the no, I mean or? usually the first time you do it, it's just a letter that they send you <coughs> about you know you you didn't make the minimum number of minutes. There could be, um, you would lose your accreditation, you wouldn't get credit, and this has happened with, uh, it's been several years ago with driver's ed, when you mess up, you don't meet the state guidelines, and I think it was in Wichita, they didn't, uh, their instructor wasn't certified. All those kids had to retake the class. Um, so, <clears throat> usually it's probably gonna be a letter, but since she gave us, she didn't officially write us up this year, um, she did some other things. We'll have that report later on ELL and just some things we need to change. Uh, next year, she probably will be a little more strict and make an official uh, note that uh, we need to look at, at that so we're not right down to the, the bare minimum. But, uh. Any further discussion? <coughs> Call for the vote. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Motion carries 6 0. Item F is the 2014 15 board <coughs> meeting calendar. There was two options that we had uh, prepared. Um, the version one um, had the fewer number of board meeting dates, um, it was work session board meeting. Um, rotated throughout the months 
version two was very similar to what we did this year with the, the exception being um, stayed off the holidays and times that we weren't going to be in, in session so we don't have to <coughs> go back and uh, uh, change the calendar as we, as we go through the year. Do we have a motion to approve the board meeting calendar? Or one of the board meeting calendars? I move to approve the revised 2014 to 15 board meeting calendar version 2 as presented. Do we have a second? Second. It's been moved by board member Lang, second by board member Patterson to approve the uh, revised version 2 of the uh, board meeting calendar. Is there any discussion? The only question I guess I would have was with moving on the uh, second version of that is if we feel with the state of affairs and everything is for the next couple of months if this is enough as far as meeting just to make sure we get everything covered and get everything taken care of as far as budget and everything else. Well, I think, you know, starting in July, what, what is on there, I think we would be fine. Um, we can always, you know, call special meeting. I, I don't think we'd have to add anything there. Now, the, the next couple months, April, May, yes, we may need to add a, a special meeting or something. Depends on deadlines and, and where we are budget-wise, those types of things. But, uh, but we may have to call a special meeting. Any further discussion? Call for the vote. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Motion carries 6-0. Item G is increase in student workbook, workbook and material fees. What we're uh, contemplating, and, and you saw on the earlier spreadsheet that um, we had uh, made the recommendation to increase the uh, fees up $30 from 100 to 130 um, That would generate roughly $53,000 um, based on our current free lunch status and, and um, that's what we had talked about. Um, we again won't know where we stand until legislative session ends. Uh, financially, but you can see where we are just with the $83,000, uh, I say, overage, and that's with a lot of assumptions um, on the enrollment fee at, at $30, um, $40 if we added $40, $71,000, $50, almost $89,000, and um, so on. So. Uh, need to uh, have that discussion then on how we want to do that. I know that was the last thing we wanted to do because you just uh, increased or decreased the fees and, and classroom fees and those things. But uh, with where we are financially for a year, um, I think we need to look at every avenue. We can decrease this any time if something would happen even after, um, after we uh, <coughs> make a decision or school starts even, I mean, we can always uh, do some things to refund if, if we're there. I don't anticipate that happening, but uh, we could make a change the other way sometime too. But we could table this until after the legislation adjourns and we know for sure. We could, as long and as, as long as we are comfortable that some shape or form, if we needed the 53,000, I mean, that would be the $30 fee or some, some variation. Um, that we could uh, come in later and do that. I'd like to table both the enrollment fee and the transportation until we know, because I don't think either one of them will affect if we wait a month, will they? <clears throat> no. I mean, uh, we just need to have some idea that we can, I say, count on those $2 amounts, roughly $100,000 um, between the two uh, as we make cuts. Is that a motion? I'll, I'll, I just wanted to make sure before I made a motion <laughs> that, that he was good with it. But yeah, I'd go ahead and uh, make a motion to table the increase in enrollment fees and the transportation within two and a half miles till the next board meeting, till we know what our final numbers might be out of legislation. Do we have a second for that? I'll second it. Uh, any discussion? <clears throat> 
So we're lumping we we're lumping the transportation into the workbook at the same time. Just the idea of tabling it, correct? But I think. The reason I wanted to second is just so we can discuss it. We may okay. we can always separate it back out. <coughs> this way it puts it on so we can talk about it and see where we're at. Uh, I did have a handout tonight similar to last week. There was a couple questions, so I uh, didn't make a couple adjustments to that. Uh, on the first page there, uh, the total was 965 kids, and then we had 1,083 total students. So I was curious what that difference was. And the, the 118 difference is special education kids that are signed up. So that's the difference of that there. And then uh, on the second page, uh, we talked about 216 a mile, and you asked if labor was part of that, and we said no. So I broke that down to let you know what the labor side of that was. And then I got to just pulled everything together and give you a more exact figure on that. Where does that 216 a mile come from? What's encompassed in that? That's where we take, you know, what tires cost, what uh, mechanic cost, what Take all that. We try to average that out and try to put a price per mile on that. So, so that includes that. mechanics, light wages, yes. office staff at the bus bar, and all that kind of stuff. Yes, everything basically except the wages, and that's why I wrote that out. So <coughs> and purchase of the buses. That's that's part of that too. Yes. So that doesn't include mechanics or office staff wages. Yes, it does. Well, the the hours we're talking about four point hours per city mm -hmm. route. That's the hours only for that driver. Okay. Route. And that 216 then includes mechanics uh, yeah. hourly rate Basically and everything. office staff. Yeah. Okay. <coughs> is there a way to add those two together to get <coughs> an actual cost per mile, or is that and kind of. I had of that on the very bottom there, the 423 mile. Is that okay. okay. I didn't see that. <coughs> Thanks, Rose. So essentially, if somebody was going to ride to and from, it's um, 846 one way, correct? It would be $8.46 if your child was going to, uh, from. And the deal with the drivers, the reason we kind of didn't tie that into last week, that, that money's still tied to the transportation department. Right now we have, like, uh, route drivers that run the routes, and then we have activity trips, all the sporting events. Those route drivers are also our activity drivers. So to try to eliminate overtime and stuff, if we could eliminate a route or two, you know, I've got a driver to step down off the route and just become maybe just an activity route driver. So we try to save on overtime there. So some of that fee is still tied in to the transportation department, just not into that route now. And what is the uh, cost, I guess, um, looking at it? I know like Great Bend, I know doesn't have any routes. What is the cost actually that we would pay parents if we chose to go a different route with busing in general? Raven does not have routes, and then they pay their, anybody who lives over two and a half miles, right. they pay that money. So what is our, what would our cost difference be on that versus what we're paying now out in the large amount of routes that we have? Well, that'd be that, well, that's a very hard figure. So we'd have, at this point, that 301 that's over the two and a half miles, <coughs> and then that would have to be, you know, where those people live, how many miles they travel into town and back, you know, that would have to be all tied together, and I wouldn't know what that is off the top of my head. Now, who, who figures those miles? Is that the parents that just say, hey, I put on 100 miles? Or no, or do you uh, actually? audited through our department. So they go through, like, Google or GPS and say, this is the shortest route, this is what you're going to get paid uh, for? Yeah, we have a, a book that's that thick over past years of people put numbers together, and then we also go out and we'll drive that. Uh, <coughs> you know, we looked at a computer program to do some of that, and that would do it for us, but since we don't have that, we do a lot of it manually. Go out and just drive it ourselves, or go off some past <coughs> history of what we have that's already been established. So, oh, sorry. No, go ahead. All right. On your second page, um, we'll start with how much does a route cost? Mm -hmm. Average city route, 22 miles per day average, times 216, and then your school days. So that's $8,173 per year per one route. Yes. And then same with uh, the driver, that would be 78.48 per one driver. Yeah, it's four and a half hours per day to run the AM and PM route and then add it together. Okay. Yes. <coughs> and on the front sheet, so let's start with route echo. Uh -huh. 
Uh, we've got 69 in the less than the two and a half mile and 15 over the two and a half mile. So that over the two and a half mile, is that over two and a half miles from the school that that child is going to? Because that's still within the city limits, correct? Yeah, city limits is not part of the issue. It's, okay. it's the two and a half mile. And that's from their house to their school that they go to. Okay. So there, there's no distinction between being within city limits and choosing a school, even though you might live three blocks from one, you choose to go across town versus being outside the city limits. <coughs> okay, I, I'm not, I, I thought I read, I read that, I thought there were three distinctions. There was, and we kind of discussed that a little bit last week, uh, just to kind of clarify some of that. Uh, there was option A, where it says the school building attendant is outside the corporate limits of the city. All of our schools are within our city limits, so that okay. doesn't affect us. Uh, option B is the school building attendant is inside the corporate <coughs> city limits of the city, and then uh, so that's all of our schools are inside that. So that's where we're part of that figure. Option C is the school building attendant is inside the corporate limits of a different city, so we don't have a school inside of a different city that we use. So, so we fall in category B. So it's a school building attendant inside the corporate limits of the city, but then it's two and a half miles that dictates that. But that, that's only for students that live outside the corporate <coughs> city limits. Uh, it says the residence of the pupil is inside or outside the corporate limits of the city. School building attendant is outside. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm reading the wrong one. You're reading A. Yeah, <laughs> sorry about that. See, the, the, the B says only if the student lives outside the corporate city limits and the school attendant is inside the city limits and and a the difference is it says if a kid lives outside or inside but the school is outside the city limits then you have to bus them which the intent of the legislature on this was that we would bus rural farm kids to and from school and so it didn't matter if they were living in on the farm and this the school is a rural uh, schoolhouse or if they were living uh, on the farm and it was a city schoolhouse, we would bus those kids. Now they did make the exceptions if you had a kid in the city and you were gonna bus them out to the rural community, you would take care of those. But ours, as I read this, we have 188 kids is all we need to bus based on your figures and we're busing 1,083. The way the state explains it to me is on option D is that where the two and a half miles is the only thing that affects what we're looking at. Whether they're inside or outside of the city limits is what the state explained to me. Well, I, I had heard that that was the understanding. So today I called KASB and talked to their legal department, and I forwarded Dean an email that I received from her just on kind of their Q&A on how to deal with this, and their first one addresses the issue we have. But I also talked to Craig Nicewander, I think that's how you pronounce it, at the Kansas Department of Education, and he's the director of finance. And we looked at the statute together. He, he uh, wanted to read it to make sure that I was had the right interpretation of it, and he agreed with me, and so did um, Sarah, and I forget her last name, uh, from KSB. And I just don't see, from my perspective, we're looking at cutting, and why, uh, I mean, if you look, we bus 1,083 kids, and I think we have right around 2,600, 2,700 kids. So 40% of the population of this district are bused to and from school, which, and I know this is something you inherited, so I'm not trying to attack you for this. I know you're up here hearing this rant, but it, to me, it's just foolish. And, uh, you know, if, if we were, had all kinds of cash, that might be one thing we wanted to do, but right now, uh, I, I mean, I know that there are people that don't have a lot of money in this community, but there's a lot of people that, that aren't in that position, and I know a lot of those people in my old neighborhood, uh, one of the houses, uh, I don't think you could buy a house cheaper than about 250000 right now. All those people, the buses ran up there all the time. And so now the, the two and a half mile, Josh, to answer your question, starts from the school you attend. It doesn't matter if there's another one that you could go to that's closer. It's the one you actually attend. But we could solve a lot of that problem by drawing boundaries and you wouldn't have that issue but but i don't even know we need to worry about it uh, except for those people you know if we're talking about 188 kids i mean before we start raising and i know this is 
broaching on another issue, but if, if we don't raise, I'd rather not raise $30 for enrollment and not raise money for kindergarten or anything else and only bust those kids we have to. Right. Mm -hmm. And you can always have a waiver process that for somebody in a special <coughs> financial circumstance or I think, Russ, you talked at the work session about, uh, you know, a dangerous road or things like that. You can always look at something as an exception, but I think the rule ought to be is... I think it comes down to a big portion of these are, a, and again, not all of them, but a big portion of these are considered a luxury for mm -hmm. some of these people. And unfortunately right now, a luxury is not something we have a lot of with, with having no cash. A couple other things, just to, so the board's aware, as I went through and read all the busing statutes, the, the routes are to be set by us. And obviously we're not going to go out and draw those ourselves. We're going to rely upon Russ and Dean to help us with that. But the, the, the school board's tasked with the, or setting up the bus routes. And we're also tasked with setting the reimbursement rate that we pay parents to drive their kids either to the drop-off point, which I think is about 20000 we spend a year right now to pay for those people over that one mile. It's and the only restriction on that is we can't set it over the state rate. We can set it below that if we so choose. And so, is there a minimum on that? No. What we let me give you a few facts and figures here that that, that I have uh, as far as um, the uh, what we pay out um, approximately thirty three thousand in mileage to those that uh, live outside or that drive to the pickup spot. Um, and the, about 16620 is what we paid last semester. And when you say to the pickup spot, that's so, kind of vague there. Is that the... Uh, so we're paying, we're paying 33000 and then we're also busing them in from there? Yes. We're paying them from their house if they live over a mile to where the bus picks them up in the country. <coughs> only... Okay, those are only rural if they're If they're riding the bus, I mean... If we pick them up at their house, they don't obviously get get that. But I don't know if that answered your question or not. But well, it's only the thirty-three thousand is only a rural charge. That's the people rurally that who drive. We pay them mileage from okay. their house instead of going to house to house in the country. They drive into a certain are, location. Are we certain of that though? I mean, I, I would say that when I've looked at the names before, most of them were rural. But I don't know that that's one hundred percent the case. If we well, do not go to their house. We have the furthest drop off or pick a point that we have. If they're over a mile from that, they are they are paid mileage to get them to the bus stop there and back. And, and then we the bus them in from there. And then we bus them in from there. Yeah. They paid the difference so from whatever however far out they live it's how to far that mile. From their house to the bus stop. Yes. And then uh, we have 62 families that qualify. I mean, we just pay one. If there's three, fa if there's three or four or more than one student in that family we just pay obviously one trip uh, to that family but we have 62 families that uh, we paid last semester um, and, and that ain't equated out to thirty three thousand dollars it's sixteen six twenty that semester and they verify attendance and make sure however i mean if they missed if they didn't ride the bus they don't get that reimbursement for that day okay. Um, they audit that every semester. They send out things to the buildings and check attendance, those types of things. Um, transportation budget this year, and this is just general fund, does not include special ed, was seven, uh, $766,844. Um, I guess traditionally that we haven't put more in there, Cheryl. I mean, it, the budget of seven seven hundred sixty six thousand eight hundred forty four that we haven't put any more money into that for busing correct yeah and what we generate or what we will generate this year for FTE um, we have uh, oh what was the number that I it's at the bottom of that handout we had 561 students that qualify for transportation waiting. That equates to 137.7 FTE or $528,492. Um, so that's a difference of 238,352 from what we what we transport uh, or what we uh, 
have budgeted to what we get reimbursed. Um, on the, you know, who we have to bus and who we don't. Can you go back I, to that again, Dean? Yeah, I, I'm I, sorry. I, I want to make sure I follow those numbers. So you're saying this year we took in $528,000. We will, that, yes. Or we will. Uh -huh. And the cost of that is what? To bus those 561 students. Our budget is 766,844. 844? Yes. And what does that include? Does that include tr sports and all the rest of that, or is that just the? Um, I don't think that does that include everything, Cheryl. So yes, it does. So. Well, it, it's going to take a little more time, but I, we can put that together, though, Greg, to come up with what it costs us to bus. <coughs> to school, I mean, and take the activity piece out of it? Well, and the only reason, what I would like to look at, I don't, I mean, if, if we're making money on it, it's well, foolish I, I to understand, cancel it. But that's, the, that's what we need to find out. But, so. but if we're not, I mean, I think, if, if for me, the question I'd like to have answered is, what would it cost to drive door to door for those 188 students? Mm -hmm. And, you know, I know, and Russ, maybe you can clarify this, but we've been told in the past that, that we don't have any buses that touch dirt. Uh, and that's kind of been a policy. And I, I, I guess I can somewhat understand that, but the, the question would be is if we just pick those kids up at their door, could we save 33,000? Right. And, you know, because it, whenever you look at weather reports, every other district runs mud routes, or they say, you know, it's a mud route, we're not, you know, they're two hours delayed, or no mud routes, or whatever. And so, and the way it's going, we'll never have to worry about that again because it never rains. But mm -hmm. I think most of those that are more distant or rural, and you know, that they're not like, I don't want to say great dam, but Salon and some of those, you know. I agree, but when you get outside the corporate city of Hayes and you start getting into the rural, I mean, every county in Kansas is virtually the same size. And so they're covering the same territory we are. The difference is, is Ellis County roads are maintained much better than any county surrounding us. <coughs> and so, you know, the, I know there's still bad roads when it's muddy in Ellis County, but they're much better off than most of the others. And so I don't know where we need to go, but I think I'm, I'm hoping that we're conveying to you guys what additional information we need yeah. before we can make this decision. Well, number, I think number one is we've got some ambiguity around what the official rule is. How, well, how that, I want, yeah, I want to touch on that again mm -hmm. too, Josh. I have a couple of questions, and okay. you finish your thought. And... <clears throat> well, I think we need to we need to finalize that. We need to see what the actual. And I'm not saying you're wrong by any means, and I'm not saying that. I just think we need something in writing saying that this is the absolute way that it is. Can we get that? Yeah, it's called seventy-two eighty-two or eighty-three oh two. It's a it's Kansas statute, and it's <laughs> and that's what Russ was reading, and that's what I. You know, I, when I talked to KSB and the state, that, that's the same statute they pulled up and read along with me. And so I think it's... But you've got a little different interpretation than how Russ interprets it, so... Well... I'll provide it, everybody a copy. I don't think there's much... Yeah, no, it, it reads... I, I agree. It's very confusing and it reads that way. But in, uh, I've talked to the transportation <laughs> folks there, too, and that they interpret it that we have to bus. Now, here's the, the question I have, and we'll put this together, that right now we get paid, or I just gave you the FTE numbers of, what, 137, um, I think, yeah, 137.7 that generated the, the $528,000. If we don't bus, we're going to, our FTE would be figured at 188, the weighting on that, rather than the, 561 so that number is going to drastically decrease too you know what I mean they're not going to pay us mileage if we don't offer service is what is what the, the issue is so we'll put that together as well and see how much difference that makes if we don't get reimbursed for those students uh, if it makes sense to do the the 188 and those things so so Dean a couple questions then on my end Mm -hmm. Okay, so we've got 1,083 students, or Russ, maybe you have the answers here. We get paid on 561, right? Those are the ones that meet the requirements? That are over two and a half months. So really, then, we've got 500 that don't fall in any requirement, <coughs> correct? Is that, would that be right? That are just basically called up the school district and said, hey, I want my kid on the bus? Well, I hope to be 
504. Okay. 500, yeah. Because the way, the way I look at it, I mean, I don't know if it's an ethical thing or not, but if someone lives a block away from a school and wants to be transported <coughs> three miles to the parent's choice, why should someone else be picking up that tab? Agree. Well, so the that, issue that's we have now are the class sizes and huh? trying to yeah. remedy that. I know. But are we going to then look basically so we're looking at maybe a dollar? Yeah, I think is what you proposed okay. per day. If we're looking at five bucks, less than, less than a dollar a day, yeah. and really figuring that what that cost is to transport the students that don't, you know, meet requirements. Well, I think the problem is if you look at a dollar a day or the one fifty, which is slightly less than that. I mean, what what sort of floodgate do you open then? Because some parents may say, boy, I didn't know I could send my kid on the bus for a mm -hmm. buck a day. I can't even afford to start the car up and drive across town and back for a buck a day. And so I, I might as well sign little Johnny up to go to, to get the school bus. And so we may double our, our kids on the bus. But we eliminate some traffic problems. I don't know that. I don't yeah. that you know, we already have a flow problem a little often if we have every parent bringing a child to school. <laughs> we, we, we touch on the next problem. Obviously, the best would be to everybody to bus and pay their way and make money on it, but I don't think we're going to be able to do that. <laughs> and when we're looking at that, that magic number that you're going to put together, Dean, and mm -hmm. have all fine tuned, I, I think there is several kids, that, you know, there's 500 and some that don't, don't come into it, but then you got the, you got X amount of routes that might go away, you got, uh, I've been, I've been to the okay. transportation department. I know you've got some some concerns with the driving equipment, the buses themselves. We've got the investments that we've got to make coming up. I mean, it's so I understand the 528k. I think a lot of those are still going to qualify, and there's going to be money there. But then you also look at, you know, it's one route is 8,000. 16. Well. One route costs eight thousand per year. Then you've got, you know, so you've got those routes. Then you've got, unfortunately, drivers associated with that. Which, you know, I don't like to talk about anybody losing a job, but that does go hand in hand with eliminating a route, depending on what you can shuffle. Because I, you're short drivers in general, aren't you? So there might be a way to to <coughs> smooth some do. of that. Like that one gentleman, pick down a route. He's willing to. to go on activity trips instead of that, mm -hmm. which would in turn help us alleviate some overtime that we have right now. But through the rest of the year, it's shorter drivers, and our route drivers or activity drivers, and yeah, part-time drivers didn't come in and help fill in our route. That was my so. other, other, oh, go ahead. Well, so as, as we're looking at these, as we're balancing all this, uh, and I'm sure you're, I'm just talking out loud, I'm sure this is already part of the plan, but we're looking at the future fiscal with bus investments and everything else versus what we need now versus what we don't have versus what we could sell stuff for. So this is going to get probably a little bit complicated. But I think there'll be a magic, that magic constant that we can put in there. That figure on the uh, the 10, 14 per hour pay, you were talking about with the overtime stuff, does that take into account any overtime on those drivers or is no, that just the flying? Okay. But, that, but we're, I mean, that's that good fringe. All that does that include benefits too? Is that the total package? That's the per hour charge that they're paying. How many are at that rate though? Uh, I sent that to Dean. I think it's 24 full time people <coughs> that run buses. But uh, I mean, how many? How many are making the, the starting? Well, the you know, for example, at a 1.8 percent raise, if you take 1.8 percent times 10 to 14, it only bumps it a few cents. Right, but we, I mean, I, I, and I haven't looked at the salary schedule for a while, but I thought it, several of them were in the, like, the $12 an hour Some range. Some people have been there 20 some years. But right. Back then, the rate was $8 or $9 to start, well, you know. But, so but what I'm saying is. What the average or what that's what we need to find, though, is that average or whatever. Yeah. With benefits. That, with benefits, benefits and overtime included. Well, if you just simply take the total dollar budget of 766000 and divide it by the number of kids riding, it's about $700 a kid. A year, seven hundred and seven dollars. And if you if you extrapolate it out, it it, it appears those five sixty one equate down to one thirty seven point seven, which looks like we get about a point two five 
FTE for each kid on the bus. So if you took that 188 we had to bus times that, it would get you 180, 386. And if it still costs 707 dollars to transport those kids, you'd be at 133,000. So you'd still be ahead of the curve. I don't know to the same extent, but I mean, I look at it. If you've only got 188 kids, because to transport uh, 300 kids in the out-of-town routes. So if you could even cut that down to three buses, I mean, you're looking at potentially eliminating nine routes. And, you know, maybe you still have to keep a couple, two or three of those buses and, and some of the drivers for those positions. But, you know, I mean, you're looking at a substantial savings in that area. And, you know, I, I understand what you're saying, Josh, about jobs and things like that, because I think it is a factor to take in mind. But, I mean, we're, our primary job is to provide the best education we can. And getting them to school doesn't really do any of that. Now, if they're not, if it's the difference between them showing up or not, then it's a big deal. But if if we can ensure that they're going to be here, otherwise, I'd rather take that money and put it to supplies. Well, uh, any Sorry. number of the things we're looking at cutting. So, because I think, I mean, if you reconstruct those routes. Um, you know, actually, if you need four routes for 300 kids and you're going to be just slightly over that, you, and we have kind of a rule now that they can't be on the bus more than an hour, which isn't, I think that's just an internal it's a, rule. It's a guideline that the state or everybody tries to go by. But if we tweak that slightly and said we could go to an hour and 15 or an hour and 20, you might be able to get those 188 on two bus routes. Now, it, it changes numbers-wise because of distance, but... I mean, it would be, it would sure be something to look at, because I, I, I just, Victoria doesn't bus any of its kids, Great Bend doesn't bus, and I, those are the only ones I know about, and I know there's others that are in the same boat, but if they can do it, we should be able to at least take a hard look at it and see where we're at. The last, I just have one more comment on that, and, and this doesn't doesn't apply to you, Russ. But uh, I think we need to look at the reimbursement rate. I guess I have two comments as we go through this. But the other thing I think uh, we need to look at is the boundary issue, because some of those 188 may not be two and a half miles away if they had to attend a school that was on their side of town. So, you know, I, I, when we and it's it's a, a novel issue for us, but not so much so. I, when I went to school here, we we had uh, boundaries, and you went to the school that was in your boundaries, and it was that's how it was until we opened O'Laughlin, and then when we opened O'Laughlin, I, I can speculate as to why we did it, and, but we changed that, and we haven't had it since, and uh, so I, I think we can do it, and. Uh, I mean, there's probably more than just for busing issues reasons to do that, but I think it's something we need to explore. Have we been busing ever since you've been on the board? Because I think you probably have the most seniority here. Uh, we have been busing since, since I've been on the board? Yeah. No, yeah, for 10 years, yeah. I don't know that we've ever not. Any further discussion? Dean, do you think you understand what we're looking for? Yep. Well, the motion on the table, or the motion is to table these two items uh, until the next meeting. Any further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Motion carries 6-0. We're done with you. <laughs> and item I. Russ, thank you. Thanks thank for you. Thanks, Russ. Russ. Thanks for answering the questions. Item I is the resolution to increase the local option budget to 31 percent. Dean? Um, I'm going to recommend we table this as well. But <laughs> again, the uh, legislators um, are going to have to make a decision. If this is going to happen for <laughs> next fiscal year, they're going to have to make a decision by Friday. Whether they're going to let districts increase from 
I say 31 to 33. Right now we have 30 percent to go to 31. It'd have to go to election. They're looking at all of those things. So I think we need to table this um, until we get more information to see what the actual cap's going to be and how it's going to affect us. If the Senate plan or any variation does pass, uh, they're talking about some major cuts in just about every weighting you can think of and trying to make up that difference with local option budget. And if, if that's the case and it has to go to a vote and a district would not pass that or the, the taxpayers or patrons would not pass that, then you're looking at another substantial cut across the board. So they're still debating all of those issues. Uh, Dale Dennis had talked to me about this. Um, looking at everything, there's more information all the time. Actually, there's a conference call tomorrow afternoon or at noon uh, to talk more about it. But uh, they're going to have to make a decision by the 4th if it's going to take effect next year. If not, then we could go ahead if, if you so choose um, to do the 31% and talk about a mail ballot and those types of things. But uh, the 1% increase would generate about $198,000 in revenue. Uh, that would be approximately a 0 0.65 uh, mill increase. Cost of the election, they're telling us somewhere in the $20,000 range could be a little bit higher. Um, and that's a mail ballot. And the election would take place in July, early in July sometime. I mean, it just depends. Or the whole process you go through with the uh, Secretary of State's office. If part of the lawsuit goes through to where they fund the local option budget at 100%, we would see $160,000 more, not in the budget, but that they would give to Hayes District, and that, that would lower the mill levy about 0.53 mills. And uh, another caveat to all of this, to use the cost of living weighting, which is kind of a Johnson County, Sedgwick County, those types of districts uh, rule that if you're the average price of a home is higher than what uh, the state average is and in our school district you get you can have a cost of living uh, increase it's another mill levy increase um, we would be looking at uh, 0.19 percent uh, that in our budget that equates to about uh, thirty three thousand dollars so it's not much for us it's millions in Johnson County but um, that would be another thing but you have to have the LOB at uh, 31 percent. The 33,000 would increase the mill rate about 0.11 uh, mills. So overall, if that came in and we did raise the mill levy to, uh, by 1 percent, it would be a 2.23 increase in the mill levy for LOB. That does not take into account <coughs> any increase in valuation and all those things that we'll know later in the in July and, and those things. But uh, just some rough numbers there. But again, I, I recommend that we table that until we find out what the legislators are going to do. And hopefully they'll have something on Friday. But uh, we'll see. I move to table the resolution to increase the local option budget to 31%. Second. It's been moved by Board Member Patterson, seconded by Board Member Waddell to table uh, the resolution to increase the local option budget. Is there any discussion? I would just uh, one thing I meant to mention on the last item that one of the, the uh, uh, sets of proposed legislation out there does away with all the uh, or a lot of the funding for transportation. So that may be something to keep in mind as we move forward. Thank you. I think we would lose 88,000 or something is what it equated to, but yep, that is part of it as well. Any further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Motion carries 6-0. Next item on the agenda is discussion by board members and agenda requests. I just had one. Uh, Dean, I know uh, that uh, 
based on the, the uh, uh, report we got from insurance planning earlier, we, mm -hmm. we addressed this early on, and I think it was prior to you being here, and I think it was, I know it's something we've talked about at our uh, uh, board retreat, but I, I really think we need to get that safety committee up and running. And, yeah. uh, when we are interviewing for the uh, buildings and grounds supervisor position, and that will be part of their duties is to be the safety coordinator for the district um, and committee, those types of things. And as far as awareness, that was one of the first things that we started with the slips and falls and making staff aware of those, putting up uh, signs, sending out the memos on uh, days. But yeah, I, I couldn't agree more. Well, can we have some sort of a plan or something, you know, especially based upon what the meeting on Wednesday that we have it on the agenda to at least adopt a safety committee and and at least appoint the members to that and at least we can show we're taking it seriously. Yeah, I think that's what they're expecting. So, any further discussion? I would also look into a thousand dollar deductible on that. <coughs> If, if a lot of our slips and falls have been under a thousand dollars, to have a thousand dollars to keep that off our, mm. our record would be a real good option. For what, us, what did they say our deductible was now? You just claim any we claim that goes in goes in. Yeah. So if, if a claim goes in and only costs two hundred dollars, it still goes against your record. Gotcha. And if we could have just paid that two hundred, it would have been savings to us because our, our work comp modifier would stay down. Okay. I've done that in the past. Yeah. for a couple of years and I, I did make it just about everybody's doing that in the private sector right now so. any further discussion next item on the agenda is executive session and i would make a motion to uh, enter into executive session with that to include uh, the superintendent the board of education dean who else did you want um mark and shannon and Tracy and Tracy I'm sorry yes uh, to, to include Mark Hopman uh, Tracy Kaiser and, and Shanna Dinkle as well as the board attorney for a period of 30 minutes to begin at 8.05 and end at 8.35 to discuss discuss negotiations and non-elected personnel Do we have a second second I move by myself, second by Board Member Patterson. Is there any discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Motion carries 6-0. We are adjourned.